Okay, I'm making a video to help those of you who uh, may have missed class and uh, you weren't present for the part of the um, course in which we looked at how you make a subunit vaccine. So a subunit vaccine is one of the methods of vaccine production that you looked at in lesson 1.4.2. And in a subunit vaccine, you're basically manufacturing one or maybe a few of the proteins that are found on the surface of your pathogen of interest. Now we have been focusing on viruses. So we're gonna look at using some viral DNA, putting it into a bacteria cells plasmid, and then seeing if we can get the bacteria cells to start producing um, that viral antigen so that we can purify it out and use it as a vaccine. So here you can see this is a human papillomavirus scenario. And so we're gonna take some DNA for making one of these surface antigens. And uh, again, try to get some bacteria to man manufacture that for us. So what are we doing exactly? Well, we're going to make some recombinant DNA. We're taking DNA from the virus and putting it into DNA from our bacteria cell. And so we've got a combination of two different organisms. So a new, a new combination of DNA, recombinant DNA. We are specifically going to add a gene for one of the viral antigens and put it into a plasmid. Now in our case, we're going to use E. coli bacteria as our host for all this. And once the bacteria take up the plasmid by transformation, we're going to see the bacteria start making that viral antigen. And then eventually when we got enough of the bacteria, we can crush the bacteria, extract the viral antigen and purify it, and then use that as our vaccine. So here are our major players. We have a plasmid from our E. coli bacteria. We have a gene for some particular antigen from our virus. And then we've got the E. coli bacteria themselves that are going to be kind of like little cows that we can force to make our protein for us and we'll milk our, 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 our antigen from it. Okay, so the first step is we're going to take this plasmid, which is a circular piece of DNA, and we're going to cut it with a restriction enzyme. We only want it to be cut one time. Um, and we, so imagine a rubber band, you cut it once, you undo it, you've got one long stretchy line of rubber band. Uh, we want a restriction enzyme that's only gonna cut it once. We don't want our plasmid to be cut into different pieces. We also need for it to make jaggedy ends or what we call sticky ends. And those sticky ends are going to allow us to add the viral gene to this plasmid. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take the viral gene that we will have manufactured, we'll use PCR to make copies of the viral gene that we want to use as our, um, to, to make the protein so that we can use that as our vaccine. We're, we need to cut the ends of that, that gene with the same restriction enzyme that we used for the plasmid earlier. And again, that's gonna give us jaggedy ends. So in my pictures, uh, I only use slanted lines to represent um, the plasmid cuts and the viral DNA cuts, but we want the ends of our viral piece to be cut. And again, it makes a difference where it gets cut. We don't wanna cut in the middle of our gene because that would be like cutting off a word in the middle, like you know, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. If we cut it in the middle, supercalifragil, it doesn't have the same impact. Well, if we cut our gene in the middle, we're not gonna get the, the protein that we wanna get out of it. We will have messed up the code. Okay, next we're gonna take that cut piece of plasmid and the, the trimmed gene for the, from the virus, and we're gonna combine them using DNA ligase. All right, DNA ligase is an enzyme that's gonna connect the sticky ends of our plasmid to the sticky ends of our viral DNA. And when we're done, we'll have our recombinant DNA or our DNA. And so this is our gene that we got from the virus. And then this is the plasmid that we originally cut. Now it's all back together in one circle. Okay, the next step would be to take that um, piece of, that take that recombinant DNA 
and get some E. coli bacteria to take it up by transformation. And eventually E. coli are gonna start making the antigen. These little triangles are supposed to be the antigen that's made from this sequence here. And now we can crush the E. coli and we can extract the antigen, purify it and use it as our vaccine. So um, let's kind of go through those steps using our own paper. So all you need is a regular sheet of notebook paper. You're going to need some tape and you need some scissors. And I would suggest you get some coloring materials. I've just got some regular markers here, okay? Uh, you don't have to have the colors, but it makes it, it makes it better, more easy to look at. Okay, so here on my piece of paper, I'm gonna start out by making my plasmid, but it's already been cut. All right, so I just made a, a long strip and labeled it plasmid DNA. So if you need to, go ahead and pause the video and do that much. Okay, next, on my plasmid, I, oh, I omitted this piece of information. I will have a gene for antibiotic resistance, okay? I wanna add a gene for antibiotic resistance. So I'm gonna use a different color here. And on a part of my plasmid, I'm gonna highlight a section to represent a gene for antibiotic resistance. Okay, so while I write that on here, let me explain why we're using this. Okay, so we want to know that our transformation step, when we get the plasma and we put it into the E. coli bacteria, we wanna know whether or not we successfully got the uh, E. coli to take up that plasmid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grow the new bacteria that should have taken up the plasmid on some auger that contains an antibiotic. Now, if we were really in class together, we would be doing an experiment where we used um, some auger that contains ampicillin. So the antibiotic resistance gene that would be on our plasmid if we were in class, would be a, a gene for resisting ampicillin. So we grow it on auger that contains ampicillin. If the bacteria grows, we know that it took up the plasmid because it's resistant. If it doesn't grow, we know we messed up the experiment somehow and we have to go back to the drawing board. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you add your antibiotic resistance gene to your plasmid. So again, if you need to stop the video, put it on pause and do that much, go ahead and do it. All right, next, I'm going to draw another section of DNA, and this is gonna represent my viral DNA, the gene from my viral DNA. So it can be shorter, and I'm gonna go ahead and color it a different color so that it stands out at the later stages of this little activity. All right, so I colored it green, and now I'm gonna put that this is my viral DNA, okay? So vDNA. All right, so again, if you need to, pause and do that much. All right, the next step would be to trim the ends of this with my restriction enzyme. So again, I want to have these sticky ends um, we want to cut the plasma just one time, and we want the viral DNA to be cut towards the ends. Um, so again, I've already, I'm making a long strip of DNA to be my plasma. It'll end up being circular when we're done, but I'm going to represent those sticky ends that I'm going to cut on these two pieces of DNA by just making some slants, and I'm going to cut along the slants, okay? So again, pause the video if necessary at this point. And so now it's time to cut. All right, so get out your scissors. 
And we're just going to cut out those two strips. And then I'm going to trim those ends so that they're slanty. Okay, so in real life, it's more like a stair step shape, um, but we're just going to keep it simple and we're going to say our, our sticky ends are kind of just these slanted shapes right now. All right, same thing with our viral DNA. Okay, so now I've got these two pieces of DNA. All right, go ahead and pause and do your cutting. Finish your cutting up if you need to. So now it's time to put these pieces together. Okay, so we would use an enzyme called DNA ligase to join these different uh, sticky ends together. So I'm going to represent DNA ligase with my tape. So I'm going to fit the two ends of my plasmid to my viral DNA. Okay, so so far so good. Now I'm going to join the two end, other two ends together like so. And voila, we've made a plasmid. So we've got that gene for viral DNA incorporated into the bacteria plasmid. So this is our recombinant DNA. And remember, we also have that antibiotic resistance gene. So when we start trying to grow, well, first we gotta get the uh, E. coli to take up this plasmid and we're gonna use transformation, which is one of the methods of gene transfer that you learned about when we studied antibiotics in um, uh, unit 1.2. Uh, there's so transformation, we're going to force the bacteria to take up this plasmid, but we're going to use a process called heat shock. Now, in real life, transformation happens naturally. Bacteria take up free and free DNA from their environment. Um, maybe some bacteria died and the DNA is released into the environment and then other bacteria just kind of take it up. Uh, but in the laboratory, we use a series of hot and cold um, we dunk the bacteria in hot and cold um, solutions really quick. And that opens up pores in the cell walls of the bacteria. And we kind of stuff the plasmid into those pores with that process. And that's artificial transformation. Okay, um, so we've got our plasmid. So the next step, like I said, would be transformation. So let me go back to this real quick. All right, so we've got our bacteria and we've got transformation that's happened again. Let me go backwards a little bit and show that to you again. So we take this plasmid up here and we're going to get it to enter the E. coli and it'll start producing our antigen, these little triangles here. Okay, so here's another diagram that shows you another application for this whole process that you'll actually learn about later in the course. Um, so in this case, instead of uh, viral antigen DNA, what if we wanted to force some bacteria cells to make human biomolecules, for instance, insulin to use for treating diabetes? So in this case, we would take a gene from a human cell for making insulin, and we would incorporate it into a bacteria plasmid. Uh, again, we would also do the antibiotic resistance gene in that case too. And then we would use transformation to get the plasmid, uh, to get the bacteria to take up the plasmid. We would grow the bacteria in a dish, lots and lots of bacteria via mitosis, and they're all making the insulin. 
And then we can crush the cells and we can extract the insulin and package it and use it for treating diabetes. So there's, there's, some, there's lots of applications for this process. And um, this one just happens to be in preparing vaccines. Okay, guys, you have to take a picture of your completed plasmid and email it to me to get credit. All right, have a good one.